Good morning. And welcome to Ann Street United Methodist Church. Uh, thank you for worshiping with us today. Uh, whether you are on the internet, listening to the radio, or for you that are here in person. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as Candace and Joe bring our opening music, our prelude, trumpet, tune, and G. Thank you, Joe and Candice. Beautiful. What a way to get the worship service started. We've got several announcements. Um, I'll try to run on through these. Um, Lisa Kittrell will have calendars uh, for sale to support the Costa Rica mission trip uh, after service today, and I'm assuming she's going to be back here near the North X. We're pleased to announce that Reverend Molly Shivers will be our guest preacher on Sunday, January the 31st. That's next Sunday. Reverend Molly Shivers is an elder in full connection in the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. She has been in professional ministry since 1999 and has served in both parish and extension ministry settings. Currently, she is appointed as the Director of Conflict Transformation Ministries for the North Carolina Conference. We're excited today to, we will welcome uh, Kelly Hobgood into men membership uh, through adult baptism and profession of faith. So we look forward to that. Artists and Laura Lee have requested that if you have extra flower vases to donate them to them by some means, you'll come pick them up, bring them to the church or something for their, to support their flower ministry. The community food drive hosted by St. Paul's Episcopal Church continues each Tuesday. Non-perishable food items and personal hygiene products can be delivered to the back 
porch of the St. Paul's office building Tuesday mornings from 9 to 12. Men of, Fa Men of Faith Prayer Group meets each Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock the, on the third floor of the year building. Our prayer time in the sanctuary will be this Wednesday night from 6 to 7. The blood drive is a week from tomorrow, be February the 1st. Donors can make appointments at redcrossblood.org. Uh, volunteers can sign up for John McLeod, and I'm sure he'd be glad to have all the help he can get. Now please join me in our ministry moment, Creation Care. Linda Hevner is our video host. Greetings, everyone. I'm Linda Hebner, the small group coordinator here at Ann Street United Methodist Church. With great excitement, I want to share some news with you about a new small group that has just formed, the Creation Care Team. This small group acknowledges that care of God's environment must extend from the smallest insect to all of humankind. Ann Street Church has always actively worked to meet human needs locally and globally. This enhancement complements these significant efforts while addressing challenges facing our natural world. The goal is to provide scripturally based creation care education and experiences, engaging all age groups, residents and visitors, regardless of race, creed or physical capabilities. The first creation care project at Ann Street Church begins as in Genesis with a pollinator garden on our campus. It will announce our commitment to caring for God's creation in keeping with our Christian principles. It will provide education about pollinators and pollinator habitats, beautify our campus and community, provide a place of exploration, meditation and prayer while nurturing our environment. Diane Gagnon and I were recently commissioned as United Methodist Church Global Ministries Earth Keepers. We serve as Creation Care Ministry champions and consultants. Other active team members who bring enthusiasm and rich experience to the group include Matt Dawson, Jackie Ramos, Lee Allen, Sam Brake, Artis Taylor, Sinya Marweed, Doug Gilchrist, Milton Russell, and Reverend Taylor Mills. There's room for you too. If you want to learn more, please contact Diane Gagnon or me. Thank you, Linda. Let us open with prayer. Teach us a new rock of our salvation, how your kingdom has come near. As you called Simon and Andrew long ago, call us to be your disciples this day, that we might find refuge and strength as we face the destructive forces of our lives. Grant us the strength to wait for you in silence, that we might meet you in the subterranean chambers of our souls. For in you we rest secure, and in you we abide in holy love. Amen. Please take this time to stand, and, but remain in place, pass the peace, show signs of friendship and reconciliation. And following that, our opening music will be Grace Greater Than Our Sin, brought to us by John McLeod.
sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilt. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon children's message is brought to us by Julia Royal Johnson by way of video. Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the children's sermon. I have something really cool with me today. Do you guys know what this is? This is a seashell. It is a conch shell. When you put your ear up to it, they say you can hear the ocean. Have you guys ever tried that with any shells that you have? When I hear the ocean in this shell, I think of one of my favorite Bible stories, and it is about a man named Jonah. Now, God came to Jonah and told him, you need to go to this place called Nineveh. It's a fun word. Let's say it together. Can you repeat it after me? Nineveh. That's right. Fun word. And he said, the people there, they're not living right. They're not doing good things. And you need to go tell them that they got to turn their lives around or I'm going to destroy Nineveh. And now Nineveh was a very big city and Jonah felt like he could not do this. He did not feel like he was equipped to do this job. So he said, okay. And he gets on a boat and instead of going to Nineveh this way, he goes the opposite way. And while he's on the boat, this great storm comes up and the people on the boat are like, what's going on? And he's like, it's my fault. I didn't listen to God. They throw him off the boat. He gets swallowed by a whale, spends three days in the whale. He cries out to God, God, help me. God, save me. And God does. The whale spits him out. And God tells him again, Jonah, go to Nineveh and tell the people they must repent and turn from their evil ways. This time, Jonah listens. Nineveh is still a very large city. 
It takes three whole days to walk from one side to the other. So he starts his journey. He's on day one. He's preaching in the street. And guess what? Instead of the people saying, oh, you're crazy. I'm not listening to you. Your God doesn't know what he's talking about. They listen to him. And throughout the next couple of days, the message got all the way up to the very top, to the king. And the king made a decree, a statement, and he told all the people to repent, to wear sackcloth, and to ask God for forgiveness. The people did this, and God changed his mind. He did not destroy Nineveh. Now, I love this story because sometimes I think maybe we don't always hear exactly what God wants us to do, but sometimes we do and we don't do it. That God pursues us no matter how far away we run from him because he loves us and he has a message for us, for the world, and that is of his love through his son, Jesus. So we got to listen out for God. We got to make sure that we are telling people about Jesus's love. And next time you're in the ocean or you think about whales, you can remember this great story about Jonah and the whale and his adventure listening to God and going to Nineveh. Will you guys join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, help us to listen for you. When we hear you speak to us, help us to tell people about your love. Amen. What an appropriate intro to our Old Testament reading, which is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God, and they proclaimed a fast. And everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from the throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, no human being or animal, no herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. hard enough to wear a mask and glasses and I'll add a microphone onto that and <laughs> so forgive me yes indeed uh, mark uh, 1 14 through 20 is our gospel text I'm going to read that and then we're going to hear more about Jonah but do hear the word of God from the gospel today now after John was arrested Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. 
As they went a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending their nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. May God add a blessing of, to the reading of this word today. You know, I think Jonah must have thought that God was joking. Go to Nineveh? Really? Are you serious? And sure enough, Jonah runs from what God has called him to do. The word of God has come to him to go to Nineveh, that great city that, as we've heard, was so big it took three days to walk across. Now, I've never walked across Beaufort or Moorhead City, but I don't think it'd take me three days. So our text begins that at the point after the big fish, when it says the word of God came to Noah, I mean Noah, to Jonah a second time. It may have been some time since you've read the whole story of Jonah. You know the highlights. You know about the ship and the fish. But do you recall the part you heard today about how when he finally got to Nineveh, what he did? And do you even know the part after that about how when the people had repented, Jonah was bitter that the Ninevites listened to God after all. Who knows that part? Do you know that part? You need to read Jonah in, its, in the fullest sense. I, I would commend it to us all. He was an unwilling, unlikely prophet. Usually the prophets are ready and willing to go. You know, uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah... Jeremiah said he had a burning within his bones. Isaiah said he was a brand, you know, from the fire. He, they couldn't wait. God gave the word of the Lord to, to Jonah to go to Nineveh. And what did, Nineveh, what did Jonah say? you got to be kidding. No way. Not me. Not ever. Not, he didn't say he was in, uh, 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 inadequate. He just said, those Ninevites? Are you kidding? Those people? So it looks like Jonah's going to get his wish, right? He's divided the world into us and them, and he said, we self-respecting Jews are not going to go anywhere near those Ninevites. So God tosses the ship. God sends him in the belly of the, of the big fish. God then sends the fish to put him out on the shores of Nineveh. And now Jonah had no way around it. There was no great fish to give him a ride home, <laughs> and he couldn't call an Uber. So there he is having to get God off his back, and the only way to get God off his back is to deliver the message. I mean, Jonah is reluctant to the T. So he walks into Nineveh. Now, did he go? He goes a day's journey, but did he go up to the city center? Did he go to the halls of power? Did he go up in the middle of the marketplace? Did he get a, a megaphone <laughs> you know, of that time? No. I imagine him taking a, a bench or a stool, standing on it, and then saying a sermon that it was only eight words long. I bet you wish you just heard an eight-word long sermon sometimes, don't you? The words were, 40 days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's eight. 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 That's eight. <laughs> He didn't go to the center of town. He just said, 40 days more and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, as a preacher, I know what it's like to look for a word and listen for a word from the Lord every week. I know what it's like to get up and say, I have a word from the Lord, and then to wonder what God is going to do with that word when it hits the listener's ears. But you know what can be most amazing for the preacher is not just putting together a good sermon, but getting through to someone. And I mean you understanding and hearing the word, but, but I mean when someone really changes their life because of what they heard God say. That's really going to knock your preacher's socks off. Someone who says, you know, preacher, I'm going to leave my dead-end job and go work for this nonprofit." because I wanna, I'm tired of working to make money all the time. Or somebody says, you know, preacher, I'm going to sell 
all this, my extra possessions and give the money to the poor, like Jesus talked about. You know, that's the way, when, you, when, it's, when it comes down to it and somebody does something, that's what really, really knocks the preacher back. Because it's easy for even the preacher to assume that people are just not going to change, you know? And it's easy for you and me to assume that, to kind of get that Jonah mindset, to think, well, you know, I'll go say it, Lord, but they're not going to change. Don't send me in there. I don't even want to go talk to that person about it, that stuff in the first place. It's easy to, to be that, to take up that Jonah uh, attitude. A friend of mine who's a counselor says that 90% of the people who go into counseling get a lot of good out of it, do a lot of good things and learn some things, but they, they never really get to the point that they really, really change. Only a few really, really change. If we're not careful, we can be like that Jonah in, who was writing people off and saying, you know what, he's so stuck in his ways or, or she's, she's so proud or whatever the case is that, that I don't think they're going to change. Some people do that with the, with the poor. They think, you know, well, the poor are just used to being poor, so... They're just not going to change. They're just going to keep doing poor things to keep themselves in poverty. Or some people do that with criminals, you know. And yes, there is a problem of recidivism, of, of, of criminals getting back into jail too much, getting back into trouble. But, but they, you know, we, we, we shouldn't write them off and just think, well, they're just going to go back to doing their old things. Let's give people a chance sometimes. Because God gives us a chance. God gave us a chance and gives us a new chance again and again. And why can't we do that? We say we want to see change in people and in situations and in the world, but do we always really believe, do we always really imagine that it can really happen with God's power? I mean, do we, were we willing to, to bet everything that, that God can really change lives? The problem is that every now and then God shows up and turns our settled, normal, whatever that means, fixed, finished world upside down. And God comes along sometimes and changes everything like God did for the Ninevites. And you know, when that happens, sometimes the jokes on Jonah or on me or on you, the Jonahs within us. For you see, the people of Nineveh suddenly believed God. Eight words, and they changed. They changed so much so that the king proclaimed a fast. And, and then even in one part, it says that many repented, even the cattle repented. <laughs> now, that's why I think God had a real sense of humor in this story, too. That's why I say the joke was on Jonah. Because, because jo God made Jonah watch even the cattle repent. Now, I don't spend a lot of time around cattle, but when I look at, cat, at a cow, that cow looks at back, maybe if it look, even looks at me, it looks at me like, I don't care about you. You ain't going to change anything in my world. I'm going to eat this grass, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I love that part in Jonah when he's just, even the cattle repented. The next thing that happened was God changed God's own mind about the calamity. Now that is remarkable too. That God said, I'm going to hold back because the people listened. Now, here's, <laughs> here's where I just can't get, I just can't understand Jonah. I mean, you'd think Jonah would do a touchdown dance at the, because the people repented. And now I'm not going to try to do a touchdown dance, but you know, you imagine it in your head, okay? And you'd think that, that Jonah would just say, yes, the people repented. They heard the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. No, no. What does Jonah do? Do you all know the rest of the story? He goes up over the city, sits on a hillside, looks down and watches them repent. And he sulks. And he gets mad. And he says, God, you sent me to give this message to these Ninevites. He just never, he never does see what God can do, even when God does it right in front of his eyes. 
So Jonah gets mad again, and Jonah falls into that old temptation to just write people off. Jonah didn't believe the Ninevites could repent, and when they finally did, he just sulked. And you know why? Because he wanted to be right more than he wanted the Ninevites to hear God's word. Let me say that again. He wanted to be right more than he wanted someone else to hear God's word. That's pretty sorry. But Jonah's that tale. The, the tale of Jonah is the tale of, of how not to act <laughs> if God calls you. God really presses the question on us. Do you really think God can change souls? Do you just believe it and say it? Or do you believe it in the depths of your heart? That God can turn this world around. Do you really believe it? And are you willing to give the benefit of the doubt to someone like a, a Ninevite in your life? Are you willing to give the benefit of the doubt of, to God? That God can change someone? Ask yourself how much Jonah is in you. And I'll do the same. I'll ask God how much Jonah is in me. And we'll figure it out together with God's help. Is there some place in our head or our heart or both where we've given up on some idea that God would change somebody? And I bet some of you have a person in mind that's in your heart and in your life or maybe in your family. Where you've lost faith in God's power to change that person. I bet there's some bit of that in all of us. I think it's just, it's just human. It's how we can, in as much as we can relate to Jonah, yeah, that's, that's how we are. Jonah said, he got up there to sulk and he said, I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Now, have you heard that before in the Bible? I see your head's nodding because that actually comes at several times in the Bible. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, merciful to all generations. But it said every other time in the Bible, it said in praise. But the time Jonah said it, he said it with contempt and bitterness. He essentially said, I knew you were going to drag me out here and make me watch you be merciful and slow to anger and gracious and abounding in steadfast love. <laughs> in his classic book, The Screwtape Letters, maybe some of you have read that, C.S. Lewis has a senior devil gives some advice to a junior devil. And he tells the junior devil how to tempt the human subject, how to get under the skin of that and get into the mind of the human. He says to his younger devil, Remember, disgusting as it may seem to you, God loves those weak, filthy human vermin that crawl the earth. Hateful as it may seem to you, O little devil, God really wants them to finally be happy to recognize his love and to receive his response, receive him with grace and free, unforced response. Yes, I suspect we've all done a bit of our own forgetting what God can do. And I think we reach a point somewhere in our lives that we keep telling ourselves that the world is the way it is and it's just going to stay that way. But look at Jonah. Jonah. And look what God went through to get Jonah there to Nineveh. And look at what Jesus went through to get you here to him. Dying on the cross for you. The same Jesus who called those disciples in that gospel reading calls you and then he dies for you. God's persistent love and pursuit of us will never stop. It didn't stop for the Ninevites, and it won't stop for us. God's amazing grace, God's persistent love, is going to keep on hounding us. So that it might be, as John Wesley said, no one is a stranger to God's grace. No one. No one. As John so beautifully sang, God's grace, God's grace 
Grace that is greater than all our sin. And as it's put in the verse of one other hymn, Lord God, in Christ you set us free to live, to love, your joy to share. Give us your Spirit's liberty to turn from guilt and dull despair and offer all that faith can do while love is making all things new. I pray it so for you and for me. Amen. Praise the Lord for the great things he has done. Isn't that what it says? All right. Amen. Thank you. Now, John uh, uh, and Joe, I was watching and getting a, a read on the success of your music uh, from little Samuel Ramsey back here, and I noticed that he, he responds a little more to the singing than to the trumpet. I'm sorry, Joe. Your trumpet is great, but when you, somebody sings, he gets up and bops around like, like, any, like, like uh, nobody else in here. Right? We, and what, what is it that made us stop bopping around in church? We grew up and thought we couldn't bop around in church. And, you know, we're going to, you, you just lead us, little Samuel. We appreciate you guys. It's good to see you. Um, let's pray for one another as the people of God. And, and I don't have too many off the prayer list to bring. So, John, you, you, you got to write fast, all right? Diana and uh, Voliva is, um, has had blood clots, but I'm thankful to say she is doing better, and we're grateful for that. Beverly Pigford has a, um, a, a cancer diagnosis, and, and the treatments are uh, real hard to take, and they're having to take them slow. So uh, please continue to pray for her, too. We're happy to report that Judy Brake, uh, Sam's own, our own, had successful sh shoulder surgery, say that five times fast, shoulder surgery, um, but uh, she is doing very well. Thank you, bud. And we send back lots of love to Judy. Um, we also um, are excited that Mary Fawn Jones is doing well and has a target date for coming home uh, that should be within the next few days. So congratulations to Mary Fawn. The family of Carrie Poe is in our prayers. Don Rutz or Roots is in our prayers from our friends online. Uh, we are praying for Richard Hobgood as he is recovering from his burns. We're praying for Lee McClung and Sheila. We're happy to hear that he has one more chemo treatment. Uh, the family of Ron Holt, uh, for, uh, well, excuse me, Ron Holt's sister, who was killed in an automobile accident, and that must that's come from online, and we are uh, we are definitely going to pray for the Holt family. How good, how, how terrible! Um, prayers lifted for Ann and Ben Sims. Uh, Ann, over uh, our former uh, associate here, is over in Oriental. She's not too far away, 
Ben has had a, uh, a surgery for his, um, in, in adjustment for his cerebral palsy, and we just love Ben and Ann and wish them all the best. Um, Jason Rosen's stepdad, Tommy Walker, had emergency surgery, so uh, we'll have to check in with the Rote D and Jason Rosen um, and uh, for strength and for Tommy. The family of Elmer Gibby Sanderson, please be in your prayers. Troy and Robin Wright are in our prayers. Uh, Betty Peterson is celebrating her 97th birthday on Friday. That's a big, that's a big one. Um, the flowers I noticed, speaking of uh, special days, are, uh, the, represent the 48th anniversary of uh, Elwin and Molly Wood. Carl Edwards uh, has uh, had surgery and went well, and he is home. And so to all the Edwards and Goodnight family, we want to celebrate and thank them and pray for them. Are there other prayers of the people that you want to share from among the, the, from the pews today? Are there more from, okay, this, L Linda Taylor, thank you, dear, Linda Taylor, more from online, too? Prayers for the family of Billy Agnon. Prayers for the family of Billy Agnon. Prayers for Meg Bradford. For Meg Bradford. Prayers for the men of us that each of us face as disciples. Oh, the sermon got through to somebody. Prayers for the Ninevites that all of us face as disciples. The, all right, good, good. Well said, well said, prayer, uh, praying people uh, online and in, and in person. Uh, then are there any others then? Okay, okay. Well, praying people, let us go to God. Uh, that's what we do. We worship and we pray. Let's go to his name. Most amazing Lord, who is the giver of all good news. We thank you that you spare the Ninevites and that you spare us. That you look down with grace upon us and remember our travails and our troubles. You remember us as your servants and you bless those who are in need of your care. We've lifted up many today, and we know that there are many more. And each of us has had in our hearts, minds, and hearts, eye, some person who needed to know God's love. And maybe it was our own self sometimes. But Lord God, you've sent Jonah and you send us. Even when we're reluctant, even when we just say, Lord, don't make me the one that has to tell them. Or talk to that person. But nevertheless, O oh God, you equip your prophets. And when Jonah got there, it wasn't all up to him. He just said what God told him to say. And you took care of the rest. O oh God, we're praying today for those who are in need of treatments and help and encouragement. And those who are grieving, especially among us here today, even in this room, who have lost loved ones deeply lost. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be upon us, that we'll feel comforted, that we will feel Jesus come along to us and say, follow me. Oh God, thank you that you have given us Jesus in our lives to give us that second, third, and upteenth chance and to teach us even how to pray the way we pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
At this time, I invite Kelly Hobgood to come forward and stand in front of the rail. Uh, Sam, I invite you to be on this side so you can read without your mask, and I will be on the other side as we engage in this baptism. We've got water for the baptism, but I'm bringing water for my throat too, so, <laughs> so I won't get it mixed up. We are so happy. Friends, I, I want to tell you that an, an adult profession of faith, an adult baptism, is, is, is just as special as an infant baptism, but it has a special meaning too. Excuse me. An adult baptism means that a person has never been baptized before and has, although they have lived a, may have lived a Christian life for, for some time, or they may not have, they have, at the point of baptism, decided to make a profession of faith and to become a new and true believer, a member of the church. And so, while we've known Kelly uh, to be uh, a follower of Jesus for a long time, uh, she hasn't had the opportunity to profess her faith the way that she will today, and then be baptized. And so thanks be to God today, Kelly. <laughs> thanks be, don't thank me, thank the Lord, right? Thanks to God. And we can do this today in a way that uh, honors what God has already done in her life. So it's not like, it, it's, an, it's a new start, but it's a beautiful start uh, to a new stage of discipleship. So I would read to you, and Sam's going to read the, the people's part, and I hope you will join with us in this covenant. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church, incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift to us, offered without price to us. I present Kelly Hobgood for baptism. And Kelly, I'm going to ask you these simple questions, and all you have to respond is, I do. <laughs> On behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world? Do you repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Amen. Sam, I ask you, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Top of page three. There you go. <laughs> On behalf of Ann Street United Methodist Church, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian life and faith and include this person now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live accordingly to the example of Christ. We will, we will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful in her service to others. We will pray for her that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. On behalf of Ann Street United Methodist Church, will you profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments? Do you believe in God the Father? We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people and slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought to the land of the, through the Jordan, to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth, tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your Holy Spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare Christ's works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, to bless this gift of water and the one who receives it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Kelly, if you will, and kneel down. Thank you. Kelly Hobgood, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I baptize you. The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, who walks in the way that leads to life. The people of God said, praise God. Praise, praise, praise God, God indeed today. Here you are. You can dry off a little bit and rise to your feet. Thanks be to God that God has given us a new sister in Christ, a new believer, one who believes and has professed her faith openly and now joins our lovely church. Members of the household of God, I commend to your love and care this Kelly Hobgood, that you would do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members through, together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Kelly, the God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. I welcome you with the heartfelt bow of, of welcome in this, in this time. But we thank you and we, we give God thanks for you and we look forward to life together with you. Thanks so much. Oh, don't forget. Oh, I almost forgot. Wait, wait, wait. Special gift. This is made by the Knit and Pray people of our congregation and they've prayed over every stitch and every uh, crochet. And these uh, certificates memorialized today in membership and baptism. And again, thank you so much. Now the, the offering. Uh -huh. There are many ministries here at Ann Street Church and opportunities to serve and worship God. I ask you now to present your offerings to support these ministries uh, by online giving at annstreetumc.org forward slash give through the mail or in the offering plate in the North X as you leave. After our prayer of dedication, our music of sending forth will be Rock of Ages. Let us pray. God of abundance, you teach us the dangers of setting our hearts on earthly riches. May these offerings be symbols of our faith in your bounty and of our commitment to follow your call in our lives, wherever you may lead. 
Amen. Rock of ages clapped for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Stay from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my sin tears forever flow, all for sin could not atone, thou must save and thou alone. While I draw this fleeting breath when mine eyes shall close in death when I soar to worlds unknown see the old my judgment throne rock of ages clapped for me let me hide myself in thee. Thanks be to God, and thank you for being part of this service today. It's so good to look out upon you. And to you online, we are so grateful that you are with us and worshiping today. As we go forward from this place, we're reminded that we can pick up a, uh, for a donation of fifty. $15? <laughs> she gave me a hand signal. Good job. Uh, you can uh, receive a calendar to uh, support the Costa Rica Mission Project. And um, I'll ask Kelly to join me as we go out so that when we stand outside, people can welcome you and uh, congratulate you on this special day. So, uh, so you'll, you'll, come with, you'll come along with me, if you will, okay? Um, we go now from this place, ever thankful for God's love, we go now as those who were sent into the world, sometimes as reluctant Jonas, to go in and remember that God has a plan for everyone to bring them into salvation by the Lord. Let us go forth now and believe that God can change us and others and our world. Amen.
Thanks, Thanks John. Have a good week.